It's not too difficult to check that matrix multiplication is associative. For example, if you have matrices A, B, C of these dimensions, so A is M by P, B is P by Q, and C is Q by N, then one can check that this is true. Now, commutativity does not hold in general, and we cannot expect it to hold because, for example, if you have two matrices, A and B, where A is M by N and B is N by M, you can form the products AB and BA. But AB will be M by M, and BA will be N by N. So, just by looking at this, if M and N are not equal, these two products can't even be of the same dimension. But suppose you look at the case when both are, say, N by N, still, commutativity doesn't necessarily hold. For example, if I take A to be 1, 1, 0, 1, and B to be 1, 1, 2, 0, then A times B is the following, and B times A is this. So they are obviously not equal. However, there do exist pairs of matrices that commute under multiplication. And the simplest one to see is when one of the matrices is the identity matrix. So suppose the A is n by n, and where i n denote the n by n identity matrix, so is the matrix with ones on the diagonal and zero everywhere else. Then A times I N equals I N times A, and that will equal to A. Sometimes when the dimension is clear, we don't write the N, and we just write the I. So that's just a couple of properties that I want to mention before we talk more about inverses. So in the previous video, you saw the definition of a left inverse. Now it turns out that if you have a left inverse, you also have a right inverse. So recall that a left inverse of a square matrix is a matrix N, such that if you multiply them together, you get the identity. And the right inverse is exactly as it says. You multiply from the right, and you get the identity matrix. It's not at all clear that if you have a left inverse, it will automatically be a right inverse. The reason is simple, because we saw that commutativity doesn't always hold. So this is the content of the next theorem. So let f be a field, and let n and a be n by n matrices, with entries from f. If n times a is the identity matrix, then a times n is also the identity matrix. Now, if we interpret this n times a equal to i to mean a is the right inverse of n, then a is also the left inverse of n. So there's no distinction between right and left inverses. We'll give a proof of this in the next video. So let's see what the consequence of this is. Now, the first is, if you have two left inverses, then in fact they must be equal. So if n times a is i, and m times a is i, then n is equal to m. The proof is very simple. By the theorem above, we have a times n equal to i, because n times a is equal to i. So what that means is, I can write n as i times n, and i is m times a, right? This is what we have up here. And so I have an n here. And then by associativity of matrix multiplication, I can write it as this. And I know that a times n is i, so this is just m times i. And this is just m. So if you read from the left to the right, you see that n is equal to m. So the left inverse of a matrix is unique. And the next result is similar. If you have a left inverse and a right inverse, then they must be equal. So if n times a equals i, and a times m equal to i, then n is equal to m. So again, all matrices are n by n, 
The proof is even easier than this previous theorem. So let's start with n and write that as n times i. And i is a times m. And by the associativity of matrix multiplications, I can rewrite this as this. And n times a is i, so this is i times m. And that's just m. So whether you're looking at the left inverse, right inverse, these two results tell you that you are talking about the same matrix. As a result, we can say that such a matrix is the inverse of A. So if n times A is equal to i, the identity matrix, then n is called the inverse of A. n is denoted by A superscript minus 1. There are some properties that you can check. The first one that I'm going to write down is if you have the product of two matrices and suppose that its inverse exists, then it is the inverse of B times the inverse of A. This equality actually packs a few things here. You can read it in two ways. You can read it as follows. The first is A times B is a matrix. And if its inverse exists, what this is saying is B inverse and A inverse also exist, and this holds. Now, the second way to read it is to read it backwards. If A inverse and B inverse exist, then the inverse of AB also exists. Another property is that if you have the transpose of a matrix, and you look at its inverse, it's the same as the inverse transposed. Now, what is the transpose of a matrix? Well, basically, a transpose of a matrix is the ith row becomes the ith column. So for example, if A is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, then A transpose is going to be 1, 2, 3. As I said, rows become columns. 4, 5, 6, and 7, 8, 9. So again, you can read this two ways. The first is, if the inverse of A transpose exists, then A inverse also exists. And if A inverse exists, then A transpose inverse also exists. So this is another thing that needs to be proved. But before we see any of these proofs, we'll have to first prove the theorem that I've quoted before, that if the left inverse exists, so does the right inverse. And that's the content of the next video.